We kindly ask that you refrain from bringing firearms in this building, and we would appreciate it if you left them in your vehicle. Please keep our atmosphere family friendly. Those were the words posted on a sign on the front entrance of the Just In Time Recreation Bowling Alley, where seven people were murdered by a man with a gun who didn't give a about that sign. I think I'm stating the obvious when I say that the sign did nothing to stop this man from walking right into the bowling alley with his gun. But I'm sure it stopped everyone else who decided to obey the sign and not bring their gun into the bowling alley. When we talk about guns in this country, too many people are not having this conversation in reality and believe lines on a piece of paper work the same way to stop criminals as they do this bug. The reality is mass murderers love gun-free zones. That's why since 1950, 94% of attacks occurred in gun-free zones. Mass murderers are not looking for competition. They're looking for easy victims. And what's easier than shooting at someone who doesn't also have a gun? That's why when cops show up to active shooter scenes, they bring guns. This is why it baffles me when anti-gunners joke about the saying, only a good guy with a gun can stop a bad guy with a gun. Like it's not true. Don't bring a knife to a gunfight is a saying for a reason. And because seemingly no one in that bowling alley had a gun, the only thing anyone could use to try to stop the shooter was a knife. He died as a hero because he picked up a, a butcher knife from somewhere as, you know, the, he has all that stuff near the bar anyways. And he tried to go at the gunman to stop him from shooting anybody else. Do you really think that if this man's son had the opportunity to face this shooter with a gun instead of a knife, that he would still choose the knife? So why are we continuously putting up no guns allowed signs on windows thinking that's gonna stop a mass murderer from bringing a gun into the building? And the thing that truly crushes me is that this dude had a gun malfunction that took him about 40 seconds to clear. I looked and he had his, his assault rifle uh, kind of pointed down at the ground and he was looking around sort of like in a panic and, and you could tell that maybe he had some sort of a weapon malfunction or something like he needed to clear the chamber. Just one person with a gun in that situation could have sent shots in his direction and at least put him on the defensive and make him take cover or take off or die. Think about that. He had a malfunction after the first round, the first round. This whole situation could have ended with only the shooter dying and no one else dying in that bowling alley if only someone had a gun. Yes, I'm Monday morning quarterbacking this to hell, but we in the gun community have been saying for decades that gun-free zones are nothing more than free killing zones to mass shooters. The crazy thing is I've been bowling a number of times recently and each time I carried a gun and each time I honestly would ask myself, do I really need a gun here right now? And I would almost feel silly about it. Like, why am I carrying a gun to go bowling? But you know who wasn't laughing and who didn't feel like it was silly to carry a gun while they were bowling? Reality, reality. Because reality knows anything can happen anywhere at any time. And carrying a gun is a small price to pay to be able to protect yourself during those one-off moments where you thought you would never need it. Since 1899, there have been 474 million firearms produced for the U.S. market. And there are over 300 million people in this country. It is not hard for a potential mass shooter to get their hands on a gun illegally. Stop playing Russian roulette with fate and buy a gun, learn to use it safely and responsibly, and keep it on you. And get rid of these stupid gun-free zones. They make us feel safe right up until a mass shooter decides to ignore the sign on the door. You know how frightening it is to think about what happens in the moments before, during, and even days after having to use your gun in self-defense? When you first start carrying a gun for protection, it can be a very scary and nerve-wracking experience, especially if you haven't gotten the education and training you need to feel confident. I've been there myself hoping I never have to go through a self-defense shooting, which is why I'm a member of the USCCA. As a USCCA member, you can eliminate some of the stress of carrying a gun for protection by accessing the amazing wealth of firearm education, training, and current state-specific gun laws of your state or states you may travel to. This can help you be prepared for or hopefully even avoid a self-defense incident. 
As a bonus, members automatically become insured on the self-defense liability insurance policy purchased by an issue to the USCCA. Click below to learn more. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.